chemical equilibrium. Well, chemical equilibrium is an expression which refers to a situation which arises in a reversible reaction. Now you have to realise that reversible reactions are actually commonplace, they're not unusual, they happen all the time. A reversible reaction is where the reactants, the chemicals you start with, turn into a product, but the product can turn back into the reactant. It follows that there comes a point where the rate of this reaction, the so-called forward reaction, will become the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. And when that happens, we've reached equilibrium. The two rates cancel out, a kind of chemical stalemate. If you get to this position of equilibrium, and the two reactions are effectively cancelling each other out, what would happen? Well, nothing would happen if you left the reaction alone. It would sit there, really effectively doing pretty well nothing, except constantly cancelling itself out. So what does it matter? Let's suppose, when we got to that position, we had very little product. Let's imagine a situation where we had a large quantity of unreacted reactant, and really very, very little product. Hardly any product at all. Now, if we were interested in making this product, that would be a very unsatisfactory situation. So it's in our interest to find ways of shifting the equilibrium. We're usually concerned with shifting the equilibrium to the right. In other words, we're normally trying to encourage a forward reaction, that's what we want to happen, and we usually do not want the reverse reaction to take place. So it begs the question, what can we do to influence this situation? There are certain conditions which we could alter. Let's take one of them, and that one is concentration. In other words, what can we do by changing the quantities of these chemicals that might influence it to go one way rather than another? Well, here's a chemical reaction you may have been shown. It's a reaction between iron 3 plus ions, now you don't need to worry about these particular chemicals, iron 3 plus ions, thiocyanate ions, and when these react together, we produce something which we'll call iron thiocyanate. As I say, the names of the chemicals don't matter. The point is, the chemicals on this side tend to be colourless in appearance. Whereas this substance is a blood red colour. If you mix them up, you can end up with a situation which is something in between. It's not blood red and it's not colourless, it's more of an orange colour. I guess we could say that when we've got orange, it's kind of half and half, it's somewhere in between. If we have this orange situation and we simply left it alone, nothing would happen. But the question is, what would, what would happen if we were to alter the quantities of some of these substances? For example, suppose we were to add more iron 3 plus. Let's say we came along with more of these ions. How would, the, how would the system respond? What would happen? Well, we call this equilibrium because the word equilibrium means balance. And it's in some ways quite useful to think of this as a balance. If it was balanced a moment ago, then it won't be. We have too much material on the left hand side. And the only way to restore the balance is to take some of this material and put it over to the right. And that's precisely what happens. When we have more material on the left than should be there, the forward reaction is encouraged to take this material and put it over to that side. So adding more iron ions will make it shift to the right. Suppose, for example, we did the following. Let's imagine we were able to remove the thiocyanate ions. Suppose we could do that. What would happen next? Well, once again, think of it as a balance. A moment ago it was balanced. Now we've upset the balance. We've removed the substance. How can the system restore the balance? We'll need more material here. The only way to put more, put more material here is to encourage the reverse reaction. Some of this product will have to be shifted over here to restore the balance. In other words, the reverse reaction will be encouraged. A reaction like this is not a particularly important one, but we could apply this logic to a useful industrial process, as we'll see later. Let's take another example of that. Here's, a, here's another 
reaction which we could investigate. When ammonia gas dissolves in water, an aversional reaction is created. The ammonia dissolves in water to form an alkali, ammonium hydroxide. What we really have is ammonia in water forming ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. Because this is an alkali, because we have hydroxide ions, we'd expect to have an alkaline pH. And it's true, this might have a pH of, say, pH equal to 11. If we left this for days or whatever, we find that the pH stayed at 11. But if we were to come along and alter the concentration of one of these, how would that affect the pH? Well, for example, we might come along and add more ammonium ions. How could we add more ammonium ions? We might add a something such as, say, ammonium chloride. If we added more ammonium chloride, the ammonium ions in the ammonium chloride would effectively increase the concentration of ammonium ions. So now we've upset the balance. We now have many more ammonium ions than there were a moment ago. How will the system respond? Well, it certainly will respond, but we'll try to restore the balance. It's the same story as before. If there's too much on one side and not enough on the other, we'll take some of this material and move it over to restore the equilibrium, to restore the balance. That means that having put in more ammonium ions, the reverse reaction will be encouraged. But in encouraging the reverse reaction, it's not just ammonium ions which are taken over here, it'll take hydroxide ions with them. And it's the hydroxide ions which, remember, are making this alkali. So, if the equilibrium shifts to the left, there'll be a reduction in ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. If there are fewer hydroxide ions, they'll become less of an alkali and the pH will fall. And it's true, if you do this experiment, you find the original pH decreases. It might drop to, say, 10. Again, it's trying to prove the point that you can influence a reversible reaction. Is the one other reversible reaction. When bromine water, or rather when bromine is dissolved in water, the following equilibrium is set up. We get hydrogen ions, we get those ions, and what does that leave us with? Let's see, we get uh, yeah. We have this equilibrium set up. Now, what can we do to make the shift to the right? Let's say, for example, we wanted to encourage the forward reaction. How can we get it to do that? One possibility would be to remove something on the right. If we remove something from the right, the system will shift to the right to replace it. And the most obvious thing that we could remove are these hydrogen ions. Now, how can we remove hydrogen ions? You might recall that hydrogen ions are an acid. If we could remove these acid ions, the equilibrium would shift to the right. What can we remove hydrogen ions? An alkali. And it's true that if we were to add an alkali, the alkali will remove these ions, the system will shift to the right to try to replace them. You will see a colour change, by the way, because bromine water is orange in appearance, whereas the substances on the right hand side are colourless. Can the process be reversed? Well, yes, you would expect that if alkali shifts it in one direction, that acid would shift it in the other direction. But why? Why does acid? reverse the process. This thing, if you're adding acid, you're adding more hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are what make it acid. So by adding an acid, you're effectively increasing the hydrogen ion concentration, and the system will shift to the left to try to reduce the number of hydrogen ions, always trying to restore the balance. So we found that on using three different reactions, the system can be persuaded to shift in one direction or the other by altering the concentration.